Ladies and gentlemen, this is El Cochino, Tom Lawler, and I'd like to welcome you to the podcast that puts the lotion on its own skin, Lucha World. Bitchin'. Welcome everyone to Lucha World Podcast, episode number 104. We're back. Fredo Esparza here. Uh, it's been a while since we did a, a podcast. I think the last podcast we did for Lucha World was in early December. And I think I did a Lucha Classica probably like a week after or so, or maybe around that time, same time period, uh, which was, I think, the Rio de Jalisco one. Uh, but um, it's been a while. I don't think that I don't think this was a, an intentional um, t- vacation or time off or however you want to call it, but it kind of just became something that came about just because I was busy with so many other things. And you know, there was since we do Lucha Talk, I think we took three weeks off for Lucha Talk during the holidays, but um, there really was a there was a lot of um, there were you know when when I'm doing Lucha Talk, it usually ends up ha- what ends up happening is that. You know, we talk about all these shows and the CML shows haven't been that great. So it kind of, it kind of became, it's easier just to talk about it with other people than just doing a, a solo show and re- repeating what I, what I thought about CML shows that weren't very good. I don't think there's been that many good CML shows this year. Uh, for the most part, even the Friday shows have been just as bad as the Tuesday and Monday shows. I don't think, I don't think that there's a lot of people that are sticking around watching the Tuesday or Monday shows at this point. Then there was... I think there were a lot of shows that we were also attending that um, I think the plan at one point was that I wanted to interview people at one of the shows and that never came about. Uh, I did have fun at all the shows, went to the PWG Hand of Doom show that was really excellent, Uh, went to a Superboy Benefit show that was good as well. I think there were two other shows I attended that were that were good, Um, you know, the 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 RIW show with um Bluefish the Bluefish show with Blue Panther Blue Panther Junior versus uh Felino and Sin Limite so P- Tiger was supposed to be on there he didn't show up that was really the main reason we wanted to go was to see Tiger and Daga Daga showed up late with his girlfriend so he he kind of just did his match and left he took pictures and and kind of left rather quickly uh, so it was kind of hard to get interviews on that for that show and you know really there wasn't there there wasn't a lot to be there. there I, I think even PWG, I kind of was hoping to like, I don't think that, I don't think I ever try to get interviews there because it's almost impossible and it's always packed. Um, and you know, it's all, it ends late. So we kind of, we're kind of tired by that point, by the time it ends. Uh, also during the holidays, I started a new website called retro wrestling.com. Um, all, a lot of reviews of old wrestling shows. I think, this kind of explains what happened with one of the problems I have is like I I get bored with um I've been getting bored with CMLL and I think I got I got hit with boredom during that time period and I just kind of and honestly I think uh I I always wanted to do this but it never came about and it just just kind of something spontaneous that I decided to do um, started started another website and I've been really ha- I've been really enjoying that even more than watching current wrestling. So um, I think I still enjoy current wrestling, even though, you know, there's a lot that I don't like, but it's like now it's like just certain matches that I enjoy when I watch CML or AAA or anything on, on television. It's usually just a couple of matches I like to watch, but it's not like the entire show. And then, you know, I do lo- I, I still enjoy going to live shows, even like if it's a bad wrestling show. I still have fun at a live show. I, it's very different from watching it on online or you know television. It, you you tend to get bored watching it, especially with CML lately. There's been some really bad um, wrestling on those shows. Yeah, really. I think I think this this week's show is just. Ki- I was gonna do a catch up show for everyone, but I think everybody knows what's been going on. Um, this is more gonna be just a pre a preview show for um, Dos Leyendas and Ray Ray the Reyes also on this podcast. You will get part one of our interview with Superboy. Um, Kurt Brown and I drove down to Superboy, at Superboy's place, and we interviewed him. We did. We weren't actually planning on interviewing him. It just sort of just happened. I brought along the recorder, and we ended up interviewing him. Uh, we had a good time talking to him. Um, it's mostly Kurt and, and Superboy talking, just because they talk about a lot of stuff from before I was even a wrestling fan, from back in the seventies, um, early eighties. 
and stuff when I wasn't even even living in Los Angeles. So um, I kind of start. I, you'll catch me more later on in the later in the in, in later parts. Um, Superboy has some really cool stories, and this this on this episode he talks about um, some of the locals from from the past in in Los Angeles, and he also talks about promoting some of the guys that promote nowadays that he's not really he's not really ha- high on how they're promoting lucha libre and there's a lot of stuff that we talk about um, but there's this like i said i split it up into like i think it's going to be three to four parts uh just because there it, we ended a uh, kurt ended up keeping the recorder on for about two hours so there's like certain parts to, to it where there's nothing really going on or like superboy's wife would be serving us coffee and uh We'd end up talking in Spanish. You'd hear us uh, just talk, rambling on about other stuff that isn't wrestling re- related. So I have to edit that stuff out um, and have the just the wrestling portion or you know the stuff about that that's that should make the interview. Um, so before I get to the to the news, I should mention people should um, check out the Patreon page. I haven't updated in a while. I do plan on updating. I haven't. I mean, it's hard to do that stuff. I. Also, I honestly kind of think I have to change it up to just doing podcasts because I post a lot of this. Um, I post a lot of I was doing those write ups and those are a lot of work just because I'm translating a full magazine, which is at times not that easy. Takes a lot of t- it actually takes about two weeks just to go through a, a, a full magazine for unfortunately because I have other things going on. So it it takes a lot of time. And I kind of don't think people are really reading them. So honestly, I think I should just scrap that and just go with podcasts. I'll probably start adding podcasts from for my other web uh, website. Since I'm recapping a lot of shows, I kind of thought it would be cool just to like do podcast covering uh, some of the highlights of those, of those um, what was going on on those shows, in those promotions, territories, and whatnot. So I think I'm probably going to do that. I also think the Lucha Classica shows are going to be a little more focused on individual luchadors and certain time periods. Um, just because I, I, I don't, I don't think people are really like that into the, I don't know, for whatever reason, I, I think what I'm interested in, maybe it's not something, it's not something that people are as in, interested in. And I don't think the, I don't think there's a lot of interest in the, in the write-ups. I think it's more me just doing a bunch of work for, um, for a little, for very little interest. There's very little interest in it, unfortunately. Um, I might, could, I might bring that back at a later date. Who knows? Um, uh, but anyways, uh, since the year started, there's been a lot of um, news, mostly coming from the in terms of what's been going on with the TV networks in Mexico. As we got finally got, I mean, there was about a three week period in late December, early January, where AAA wasn't on Televisa, and immediately people started to wonder if that was the end of AAA on Televisa. They didn't say anything. No one said anything for several weeks. There were just a lot of rumors. Uh, the Planchitas Arctic column, weekly column, actually brought it up to everyone's attention. They didn't bring it up to everyone's attention. Really, the people that brought it up to everyone's attention were the people that tune in to um, AAA TV, pointing out that there wasn't anything going on. And so I think a few weeks later, we got the announcement that they were moving. They actually thanked Televisa for the, the years, for I think over 25 years of being on that on that network. And they had decided they were going to be changing networks. I think it was about a week after that announcement that they announced that they were moving to Azteca TV. And so now they're on Azteca. And with AAA moving to Azteca, about a week after that announcement, there were rumors that CMLL was going to be moving, was going to be replacing AAA on Televisa. They, nobody brought it up on CMLL's part. There were some um, rumors, denials, and eventually, it turned out that CML did end up returning to Televisa. They just did so this past Saturday. And, uh, you know, what a show to start with. A really horrible uh, Friday show. When you have the Ingobernables in a main event, building up their their um, big hair match, and you know it's going to be an Ingobernables type of match, so you pretty much know it's going to be a two-fall match that is really bad. And then you also have Gilbert El Boricua versus Diamante Azul, which, you know, this is not Messias from 2008 or 2010 or Mil Muertes from Lucha Underground. This is Gilbert El Boricua in CMLL, and he's he has not really he's not shown anything. Diamante Azul is horrible also, so 
you're basically getting and i don't even know if they made it to i don't think they made it onto televisa they 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 had um i know they had um the main event and then they had Juanato styles match and a couple i think there was another trios match that they had if they had gilbert versus diamante Sul, that would have been the dumbest mistake on televisa's part but you know they've done some bad bad stuff and you know as usual um cml being back in televisa we got the usual story of um, them having a ton of commercial breaks lots of commercials were played and a lot of editing of the matches so it's like and they never left honestly um, i think the difference was that triple a i think might have complained a little more about how their shows were airing on on televisa where cml doesn't really care about that stuff so um, they're back triple a is in azteca and there's already st- rumors that they're going to change the the day and time of when that show airs um as the rumor is Azteca is not pleased with the with the ratings, and I'm sure this will happen with um, CML and Televisa as well, because uh, as much as they they're excited about having them, it's not, it's not. I think AAA right now is a far hotter product. Um, they have better matches, which you know with CMLL that's it's unfortunate because CML this is not the CMLL from like five years ago when you had a you had a really deep roster. And right now they kind of they have a they have a good roster where it's half is good and then the other half is horrible. And there's no like the middle ground is not very much there. So it's basically really good or really awful. And unfortunately the really good kind of like the so a lot of the guys who are really good kind of like aren't giving it's not that they're not giving well, it might be that they're not giving a lot of effort, but just because there really is no um incentive in really showing more. Or getting that up because they're really just wrestling their same random trios matches so that's kind of like the tv situation right now i don't think it really matters to a lot of us in, outside of Mex- that aren't in mexico i i mean we can watch it live triple a on twitch and cml on Cla- claro or youtube actually afterwards i mean a lot i think a lot of people are going to end up just going to the the trick to watching cml really is to watch it after um the cups fan actually recaps them and what I do is basically I wait till he recaps it sometimes. And if it says okay or lower, I just will skip those matches just because it's not it's not worth your time. Um, sometimes I will watch it if it has somebody that's new that I haven't seen or it's a different type of matchup. But honestly, for the most part, CML doesn't really change that. And it's always like the same group of guys. I mean, how many times can you watch Sangre Azteca Nitro versus um, Oro Jr. and Star Jr.? That's pretty much going to be the same match over and over again or any combination of those guys in the first match. And then the second match, they always have the same combination. Fuego, uh, Reiko Meta Pegaso versus like Sagrado Misterioso Jr. and uh, Virus or or Virus, Kawato-san and um, Okumura. So it's really, there's really not that much of a difference. And they're, at this point, the guys aren't even giving like the a full effort or at least you're not really getting a quality match anyways, just because it's basically just wrestling for tourists. And, um, you know, the rest of us who actually want to watch good wrestling, um, it's it's not fun. Um, other news. Well, since we were gone, a lot of guy, a lot of a lot of changes have happened. Of course, AEW was formed, so now you have another promotion. They're now working with um, AAA, and we'll talk about this in a, at, when we re, when we preview um, Ray the Reyes. But um, as far as um, Rush and El Bandito signing with Ring of Honor, um, I think that's really. I think <laughs> you know it's funny because this relate like this relationship between CML and Ring of Honor has been going on for a few years now and it's kind of funny that the first luchador that they signed from the since having this relationship with cmll this partnership with cmll was an, an outsider in El bandito which kind of tells you you know i i don't think cml I, maybe cml was making it difficult for them to like bring in a guy for a year or you know maybe there just wasn't any anybody they were totally interested in and um you know bandito ended up going there R- R- rush finally eventually has eventually signed with ring of honor um so you know he's kind of the first cml guy to do that make that move i wouldn't be shocked if they this becomes like an annual thing where maybe one cml guy signs for a year with ring of honor i don't know because uh, there's going to be constant talent chain moving on from you know w between wwe impact um aew ring of honor and new japan and all these other places so um 
I think it's cool that El Bandito finally going to Ring of Honor. He finally gets to be a part of a New Japan type of involved, you know, where they're gonna he's gonna be part of the G1 Supercard in Madison Square Garden on April 6. Well, actually, he's gonna be wrestling a three way match. Um, it'll be Bandito and Dragon Lee challenging Ishimori for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title. That should be fantastic. You know, I'm hoping Ring. Actually, I don't think they'll they'll actually be airing Dos Leyendas on there because they're they're actually having their own show that weekend. Uh, so I was kind of hoping that they would air Dos Leyendas just so I could sign up to the Ring of Honor um, service. And then I think if you go for a month you would end up getting the April show as well. But I'm guessing that's probably not going to happen. Or they might actually get it afterwards, which would be pointless anyways, because I, I wouldn't be ordering for that reason. Um, the one good match that happened that I should talk about was uh, Titan beating Barbara Carvernario on the February 22nd show in Arena, Mexico. That was an excellent match. That was something worth going out of your way to watch. Um, one of the better matches of the year. Titan is actually, they're doing a lot of stuff with Titan lately where he's actually getting some singles matches, getting some opportunities. It's funny, I think Titan's getting the matches and Echicero has to be, do the announcing. I don't think they want to have all the good wrestlers actually on their shows. So they have, they'll push one and then they'll put the other one on the in the commentary team. So, But you know, that was an excellent match. Definitely go out of your way to watch that. Um, the upcoming Homenaje a Dos Leyendas show March 15th, um, they will be honoring, of course, Salvador Luteroz. And they'll be also be honoring Blue Demon. Uh, they had Blue Demon's other son as part of the, you know, the announcement. And he talked about the, you know, how, what an honor it was for his father to be, you know, to be a part of this show. And they kind of like during the, I think it might have been the press conference or on Informa, they tried to ask him about, um, just how involved Blue Demon Jr. was with the family. And he kind of never mentioned, um, he kind of just said that he talked about the rights to the name and the, the likeness of Blue Demon and how, you know, the family owns the Blue Demon name and the likeness, the character and all that. And Blue Demon Jr. owns his, his the Blue Demon Jr. name. So they kind of, he kind of skirted around the whole question. They were asking him if he was really related to him and he didn't want to answer that. I think it's, it was just one of those weird um, questions. But the show itself, I mean, initially, also initially on the show, well, I'll mention it as, as I go through the show. The opening match is actually going to be Esfinge Audaz Triton versus Hijo del Viano Tercero, Pulvera, and Vangelis. Um, Vangelis back getting a lot, getting a pretty good push since returning from injury. Um, he actually challenged Ultimo Guerrero for the CML World Heavyweight title just recently on a Puebla show. Um, he was unsuccessful in that. I mean, let's not get crazy. Uh, we weren't ready for the Vangelis era of being the world heavyweight champion in CML just yet. You know, he's been getting more opportunities. And also, that's also been the... I think that's also been the decline of CML is that they have a lot of guys that are, are getting... That, that are injured. And rather than retiring, they, they can kind of continue. And they're coming back from, like, pretty major injuries. And they're not the same once they return. Um, very rarely do guys actually have like really good comebacks or as you get older, you know, it's harder to come back from an in, from a, from a, from surgery and a major injury. And um, so you kind of have Vangelis, Shocker, uh, Ray Bucanero. Uh, there's a couple of other guys, Dragon Rojo Jr. You know, these type of guys that are kind of always hurt and they come back and they're not fully healthy, but since they're well connected in the promotion, they end up still getting oper- um bookings and some of them get pushed i think ray bucanero shocker work main events on on the non-friday shows so um that kind of tells you the the status of cml's roster right now where if those guys are still getting main events we're kind of we're in trouble well you know best dealer rings also getting main events too so so it definitely is a dark time in in cml um i think this show i think the opener should be fine um it's going to be interesting i kind of want to see audaz versus hijo viano tercero that seems like the match I want to see, but I'm not really that excited about this match. I, I think they could have gone with a, a far better group. Um, Titan was originally going to be in this match, and um, but Audaz is replacing him, so that's kind of like a positive there. Titan got moved up the card, but um, at the same p- time, I mean, I'm not a big Esfinge fan, and I don't think the Rudo side is particularly strong. Uh, this is a show that 
you know, there is no Hechicero. How Hechicero isn't on the show is beyond me, but that's CMLL. Um, the second match is the Micros, which will be the, probably the, the best. It'll be a lot better than the opener. Uh, Microman teaming up with Atomo and Gallito versus Chamuel, Mije, and Perico Zacarias. Usual, I, I expect this to be a good match. And, um, you know, because even like, they're, like they're, the matches that are, aren't as good are still far better than some of the undercard matches in CML right now. So I expect that. And this is going to be a big match for them on a on one of the bigger shows. So I, I would expect them to go all out on this. Uh, kind of tells you how bad Angel is where Atomo's now replaced him. Um, Guapito's just as bad as... Um, Guapito's slightly better than Angel, but he's he's still just pretty bad as well. Um, Atomo's still slightly better, but not that great. You can't really expect too much from these guys. You know, this is basically Microman and Chamwe's match to carry. Um, the third match is um, Titan is moving up to this one. So it's Titan teaming up with Diamante Azul, who actually wasn't on the card, ends up replacing, uh, if I recall, he's replacing, I think he's replacing Dragon Lee or Caristico. Actually, Dra- I think he's replacing Dragon Lee in this one. Well, actually, Diamante Azul and Titana are replacing Dragon Lee and Caristico in this match. So it's it's Titan, Diamante Azul, and Sobrano Jr. versus Mephisto, Efesto, and Templario. That should be a slightly better match than the opener. Um, just because Templario's in it, and we can finally get um, Templario and well, we get Templario in there with Sobrano Jr. and Titan, so that should be fun. Mephisto and Festo, they can still kind of have good matches every once in a while, um, so this should be a good third match. Um, I don't know if it's going to be like you know great or good, but it's still going to be at least something that's that's better than what what you would expect from a normal Friday show. Um, a lot of these changes we'll talk about when we get to the semi main event. The fourth match, um, that didn't have any changes, but it's actually a Rudo versus Rudo trios match. It's the Dinamitas, Nueva Generación Dinamita, Sansón, Cuatrero, and Forastero taking on Carbonario, Nero Casas, and Gilbert El Boricua. And um, this this will be a, a, an interesting test. Um, the Dinamitas really work well as a, as a technique when, they, when they're kind of more doing technical wrestling you know, as a technical, they're more doing a, working as technicals, so they, should, they 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 usually do pretty well at that, um, especially Cuatrero. But um, you know, you get Carvernario. This is this is going to be a test because Car, um, Nero Casas is coming back from injury, and then we also have Gilbert El Boricua in this match. It'll be interesting because if Gilbert El Boricua has a good performance against these guys, then maybe I think some of us would think that there is some uh, some hope. Um, I think it would just depend on what kind of matchup he could get in, in CMLL. But, you know, the bad thing is CML is the way they book him. They just keep putting him, you know, with the Cyber, the main mans and um, and Diamante Souls and Rusha. You know, Ru- not that Rusha is bad, but, you know, the type of Ingobernables match. So, you know, they, he gets stuck in those type of matches. He's really, Gilbert's better served being in there with a smaller, you know, a lighter, more athletic guy like Phoenix or, you um, you know, here maybe like a, a Dragon Lee, someone like that. Uh, I don't think he's necessarily a, a, an ideal guy now where he's going to work against big guys and it's going to look good. Um, it's just going to look slow. So this should be an interesting match. Could be good. Um, could be bad, like I said, just because of um, Gilbert and we don't know what causes how healthy he is. Um, the fifth match should be good. This probably is going to be the match of the night. This match actually was what changed the entire lineup. As, you, as you'll see, Audaz joined the card, and then Titan and Diamante Azul also were added. Titan was moved up, and then Diamante Azul was added to the card as well. This was an, originally going to be the Guerros Laguneros, Ultimo Guerrero, Grand Guerrero, and Euphoria defending the CML World Trios titles against um, Volador Jr., Penta Cero M, and King Phoenix. That was originally going to be the match. They came up with this really, cr- really creative storyline in CML and Forma. Uh, where the they they brought out the girls Laguneros so they could finally find out who the who their opponents were going to be at, at Dos Leyendas because this was the last match that they announced. Um, they had already announced the entire card prior to that. This was going to be the last match they announced, and it was on Informa. They made this big story where where apparently Volador Jr. went to the programming department and asked that he team up with King Phoenix and Penta Cero M to challenge for the CML World Trios titles against the girls Laguneros. This 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 led 
this led to Informa having the girls Laguneros upset that that they didn't just challenge them after a match, and it became like this big story about that. And I think about a week later, or after they announced the the deal with Televisa, that was completely changed. Um, suddenly, Phoenix and and Penta were removed and were replaced by Carist. Caristico and Dragon Lee, which I'm sure should be a good match as well, just because I think this is a that's a really good trio, and you know they're perfect for the girls Lagunero. So I, I actually think it's not going to be this this drop off. I think there's going to be some disappointment from fans who were expecting, you know, the Volador Junior Penta King Phoenix Dream Team. Now think about that. That's the Dream Team, but the a couple, like two weeks prior to that match, to I think a week before that match was announced, they had um. Um, Volador Jr. teaming up with Mystico and Caristico, and he called that a dream team. So um, so you have all these dream teams. This was also another dream team. So you really could have had three different dream teams involving Volador Jr., and they ended up with this one. Um, and I think it's fine because you have Dragon Lee. Mystico didn't make this card, which is kind of funny. Um, they could have replaced uh, Diamante Su with... Um, they could have just had Mystico added to this and dropped Dra- Dragon Lee, kept Dragon Lee in that other match, but I think this is fi- fine. Fine. Um, should be a good match like i said and the whole thing with um there's been a lot of people speculating as to why penta and phoenix were removed from the from the show um planchitas had the worst um rumor where it was he they claimed that um i forgot what oh that they were they weren't um they weren't told about this booking and that uh, when when they were gonna when CML finally like contacted them or got a hold of them, they had already booked uh, a, ma- a match for Arena Nessa, which um, if you look at that lineup, they already that Arena Nessa lineup has um, Volador Junior on that show, so it kind of made zero sense. Um, that was like the worst rumor that Planchitas has come up with, and they I think they they're pretty hit hit and hit or miss with their with the rumors and stuff, but um they're, the that was like the way out there. Other people are kind of speculating that maybe. This was more of a call from Televisa and um, Azteca, M- more so on Azteca's end, where you know they're getting the Rey de Reyes, you know the AAA shows, so they're getting Rey de Reyes with those guys, and maybe they just couldn't, um, they didn't want, um, you know, Penta and Phoenix on their com- on the competing channel. Anything's possible. It could have it, it could have been something as stupid as um as TMLL legitimately not um, just deciding to go with their own guys and you know, changing their own lineup. We've seen this before from CMLL. So, you know, it could be just from CMLL's uh, stupidity than anything else, uh, honestly. Uh, the main event is a hair match between Angel de Oro and Niebla Roja going up against El Terrible and Bestia Le Ring. A lot of people were like immediately starting to wonder why Rouge wasn't like added to this. Like why wasn't it Rouge instead of Bestia Le Ring? Uh, Roosh is actually wrestling at um, on Ring of Honor show that same day, I think, against Bandito. So he's he's got a far more important match than this one. Um, th- th- this is this is kind of an underwhelming match. I think they should have just gone with a singles match with Niebla Roja and Terrible. Um, although I will say, uh, if you watch the CML Universal Tournament final between Niebla Roja and Terrible, if you watched it live. You saw a lot of Niebla Roja that week on that show. You saw more than you probably wanted to see. And if you're if you're um if you you're more into that, you probably enjoyed a little more of seeing what you saw in Niebla Roja. Uh, uh, unfortunately those of you that did not see it live, you pretty much just got a blur or an alternate angle from that. So you did not see what the rest of us witnessed. Some of us who were watching it live didn't really notice it. Because uh, we were like just shocked at how bad he was doing some of the. It's weird. I I was um he I think the second fall he ended the Tribla ended that mat um that that fall with the Styles Clash, and he actually, I I've never seen anybody have that much trouble doing that move, and he does that move frequently. But for whatever reason, he had trouble getting a hold a hold of Niebla Niebla Roja, so he um. So he ended up um he ended up grabbing his trunks. And he showed a little too much of Niebla Roja. Um, we saw many Niebla Roja at that point, and um, um, I, I didn't see it. I don't know if it was many. Not, 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 not hating. Not, not like hating or anything. Not giving anybody any like 
information on it. I'm just saying that we saw too much of Niebla Roja. And uh, maybe that's why they didn't do the, the singles match. They should have done it anyways. I think they could have come up with some creative finish to it. And, you know, it's funny because um, Terrible did inform it afterwards and they didn't bring that up. I think they, um, Niebla Roja also did that, did um, inform it also and didn't bring it up. Terrible brought it up on the interview he did with uh, Mas Lucha. Uh, I recapped it on, the, on, the, on, the, on one of the Lucha reports. And he brought it up and he said he had no idea that that happened and he just laughed about it and he said maybe maybe it, it maybe wrestlers should wear better um gear so that this doesn't happen although he was grabbing in the wrong area so it really was partly his fault as well it wasn't just the um a a, a wardrobe mal- malfunction it was also him grabbing it as well um but you know best still they immediately added best still ring on Hedoro to this um they actually actually started setting up something in a match earlier on the on the show and then they just continued it in the match and then in, at the press conference and then on on you know they had the brawl and they signed contracts and so we're getting those guys i do kind of think the chavez brothers are probably going to win this i don't see why they would lose um honestly just because they're there's so much more value with them having hair and then leading up to another hair match at a later date i could see one of them dropping his hair at some point but I don't think it makes sense to have them both drop their hair in a, in a tag match. Um, I do see Terrible and Best Seller Ring lo- losing their hair. Um, Terrible actually, uh, I mean, he's he's been on a hot, he's been he's been on a roll, um, getting a, a better push. He's been he's been awesome on interviews too. By the way, I think during the, the his his inform appearance when they were announcing the they were announcing the the host for the Televisa TV show, CML TV show. Um, which they totally changed as well. Initially, they had announced Julio Cesar Rivera, Miguel Linares, and Leobardo Magadan were going to continue just hosting the, you know, doing the TV announcing for um, for the CML show on Televisa. That ended up changing. They ended up going with um, Riano and a couple of other people, and and Echicero was an invited guest announcer. Um, well, th- during that segment, um, they brought out Terrible, and Miguel Linares was talking about some of his favorite wrestlers and he said one of his favorite wrestlers was El Terrible so they were telling Terrible about um, how Linares had just said this and Linares interrupted um, Terrible and said you know one of the things that's also most impressive about Terrible is that he doesn't have vision in one eye and so this is actually a, a something that uh, I heard about I think last year late last year um, a, a source a source told me about this and um and but we weren't really that, that we weren't really sure when he lost or anything at that point. Um, we were kind of speculating about it. I, I think I think the story was told, and we kind of had a better a sense of when it was. I think at that at that point we thought it was like in two thousand nine, two thousand ten, but apparently it was even longer before that. I think it might have been two thousand five when he lost his vision. Um, so he actually told the story on Informa, but he went more in detail in um, on on Maslucha's when he was interviewed by Maslucha. And it's a really good story. Um, it's it's one of those um, it's one of those situations where he's actually not the only person that I know of that's l- lost his vision. I think most people know of Pirata Morgan, um, who's probably the one that's most known for that. But there's been several other wrestlers that have lost their vision in one eye and continue to wrestle. Um, there's there's a, a lot that kayfabe did, and some actually made it known. Um, so. You know, it's it's one of those interesting stories in in, in lucha libre that or in pro wrestling where you you get it, something that that that's that hasn't been brought up in a long time or isn't it's been kayfabe for like the longest time, and you finally get the story. And he actually said that it happened like in two thousand five in a in like in the summer two thousand five um, during a he mentioned the trios match I think it was arena coli sale, and he he actually said he continued wrestling for about a week before the pain finally got to him and he just had to like. He went to the doctor and they told him that he had two options. He could um, he could um, lose vision completely, and they could keep the he could keep the eye, or they could take the eye out, and he just have the the he wear eye, an eye patch, and he just did. It. He said he just kept the eye for aesthetics, so he still has a, his eye. He just can't see from his right eye, um, but he's been a terrific interview so far. Um, so that's about it for CMLL. This uh, as far as what's been going on lately. Um, Dos Leyendas, I, I don't I'm not holding out a lot of hope. I, I think it'll be a good show, but um 
I think it's kind of disappointing because we've been getting a lot of really boring CMLL shows. And so I think we, I think right now we're settling just for an okay above average show, which, you know, when you're one of the top promotions and this is one of your top events, one of your second biggest event of the year, and you're kind of like just hoping for a above average Friday show. Um, that's kind of telling what the situation is right now. You know, I was just thinking about this because we're constantly talking about how the Rudo side in CML is kind of in a decline. But I mean, could you imagine what CML would be like on the Rudo end if they would have kept guys like Ray Scorpion, Puma King, um, Taurus, who else is there? Uh, Tejano Jr. and Fantasma. Yo, Fantasma. There's five Rudos that CML could have had at some point and they let them go and you know, they're, you see what the effect is. Now we have best of the ring in main events. Uh, we have aging Rudos like Felino, Efesto, uh, Mascarano dos Mil. You know, we have that kind of group of guys. And, you know, really you don't have the you don't have the depth that you could have had. Um, you have a lot of guys like Echicero who is very rarely used. So, um, yeah, like I said, hopefully it's a good show and, and it'll be fun. But other than that, that's about it. I guess right now, I guess we'll get we'll go to the interview with Superboy, and we will be right back after that with the AAA portion of the show. And we are here with Superboy for this must be the fourth or fifth interview we've done with him. Yeah, we've done quite a number of them. Quite a bit. Yeah, he's been a big part of the Lucha World podcast. So. Uh, Kind of going freeform, we're wanting to talk about some of the old You're school... You're just going to ask uh, them all the same questions we asked them every time. Before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we're going to do some overlapping. Uh, but one of the guys we started talking about was one of the veterans so the of plane, Los Angeles. The helicopter has. <laughs> Are there any train tracks nearby? No. Damn. No. We missed the we, jackhammer. We Remember the interview where there was a jackhammer in the background? <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. that that we'll never edit that shit out. Never, <laughs> ever, ever. One of the, one of the veterans, uh, both in the Labelle promotion and on the local scene here in the seventies, uh, up until shortly before his passing, was Mondo Lo, uh, Mondo Lopez. Mondo Lopez superstar. Yes. Now, when I was a little kid, he was what they'd call enhancement talent. He'd usually put over the stars on uh, television, but uh, we were talking a little earlier that it was through a, a lucha show at the LA Sports Arena that was you know, exclusively luchadores from Mexico and some of the local guys where he made an impression and actually got the superstar gimmick and went to Mexico with it. Yes, exactly. And I was like I was saying before, um, oh, talking to my dad when I first met uh, Mando Lopez, uh, he said that uh, I guess Mano Lopez's first match was against my dad. That is amazing. In, in Guadalajara, in Mexico. Wow. Yeah. And and, and uh, sweet guy. I love them. You know what? It, it, it's just a shame that he passed away, and you know, and and away from this business that he loved, and uh, it was really sad. It was really sad. Did he kind of like? Uh, shy away from everybody when he got. Sick. You know what? He shied away. He was uh, he was actually active and he was training mm -hmm. uh, Coloso for a long time. Coloso mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I think Tlaloc, all the big guys. Oh, Tlaloc, that's right. Yes, right. and um, I guess he lost one of his legs. Mm. They amputated his legs. I don't know one or two. And I remember keeping in touch with him, calling him every now and then, because uh, he just all of a sudden he he, he disappeared. From the from from Gil's garage where you know he used to uh, be all the time training or hanging out, and uh, I started asking about him and I got his number, and I started talking with him and and then you know we were supposed to meet up sometime, mm -hmm. and uh, he passed away. He passed away and it's really sad, you know. And that's why you know I'm so glad that you're here and that you know we're remembering all these guys, all these legends. All these people that, you know, that put us on the map here uh, in, in SoCal, you know, because we talked about it so many times, how they went knocking on doors and, you know, being humiliated, uh, you know, experiencing uh, a, a lot of, um, 
a lot of uh, hate and stuff like that, you know. Uh, and it's it's time we recognize these people, and you know, and, and they really made an impact in this business. Because this community, the Lucha community here in Los Angeles, is unlike any other wrestling community in the United States. I can't think of any group that has a regional connection that goes way back to the 60s, where now sons and grandsons all in this regional area of L.A. are all still connected and involved. It is, and I'm I'm so grateful of that. You know, unfortunately, it's dying out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nowadays, you see more indie companies, a more American style, Mm -hmm. more... You know, now we have, uh, uh, what is, you know, AWS, Santino Brothers, and all these little companies are popping out. They're all, you know, uh, um, uh, American American guys. And, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, they're, they're, they're doing their own thing, you know, which I respect. And it's really cool because some of these companies, you know, uh, they do work with the, uh, with the Lucha talent. You know, it's a whole different thing, but... You know, now uh, I guess they, they, they're making a name for themselves and, you know, trying to be, you know, part of that, you know, part of that history. But it's not the Lucha history. Exactly. It, this, I mean, Hadco Plaza was the first time I saw pure Lucha Libre. I mean, from the start of the opening match to the main event. Uh, an occasional American in in the mix, but mostly it was pure. And it was... It was like an epiphany for me when I when I saw it, especially the discipline uh, in the opening matches. And I know we talked about this on other podcasts, but what I was so impressed by, and this again was when your father was booking, uh, was how the opening matches, the wrestlers were really tight with their holds. They were solid, but mm-hmm. they didn't go crazy with a million high spots. Exactly. It was very disciplined what moves they use not to upstage guys higher on and not only that not only not only uh the the, the solid wrestling but not, not or the high flying mm-hmm. or going out outside the ring yes you know? they, i would never see what was first second third you know take it outside you know that was left for the semi and the main event you know for guys to fly out to you know, fight you know outside the ring, and you know that was left for the for the main. Yeah, event, for it the was discipline. Yes. it was discipline. You know, you hit it right in the nail when you said discipline because right from where it, where it, when it started all the way to the end, every everything was so organized, uh, and and we talked about it many times. Platanito talks about it all the time. Also, how we had this canvas in the stage, you know, uh, there was this beautiful canvas. In like like a little pueblito, a little little pueblo, and it was full of so many holes because we would go uh, behind the stage and we would watch the matches through there, mm-hmm. you know. And I remember going back. I remember Hako Plaza, an epic place. I remember I loved Hako. You would go to the side where the heels would come out, and you it had a couple of steps steps going into the backstage, and right in the corner it had a piano. Hmm. There was an old piano. I don't piano. remember the piano. No, no way. Don't? Oh, oh my God. yes. Oh, my God. It had an old piano right in the corner. And it had a piano in the corner, and then it had another piano in the um, in the bar, the mm-hmm. bar area. Uh, the bar area, you had the bar, you had the tables, and then it had another little section, like a little private section, mm-hmm. and it had a piano there. Oh, also, wow. it was beautiful. It was a beautiful building. It was an awesome building, and I assume that it's a place where they held dances and concerts. And yes, stuff. exactly. It yeah, was... uh, I remember uh, uh, being uh, a young boy, you know, going to the luchas, and I was seeing uh, the posters for uh, 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 bailes and you know dances and stuff mm-hmm. right there. And they had two halls. Uh, the, the the one on the on the top where they used to do the luchas, and then the one on the bottom with the where they had the dressing rooms. It was a big hall. It was yeah. It was big. it was a wonderful place. I yes. I, 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 I every Sunday five thirty. I remember. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Loved that place. And they used to charge what uh, five dollars. Uh, uh, Two dollars yeah. kids. Yeah, the guy, the person who turned me on was a guy named uh, or- Lloyd Lee, who. Okay. Uh, and I was living in Oregon at the time, and he said, okay. "You got to see these shows at Hadco Plaza." Or he called he he referred to it as Twenty Fifth and Main. Yeah, Twenty Fifth and Main. And he says you wouldn't believe it: five dollars, and you get mask versus mask bouts. You get, uh, you, you know, you'll get 
six, seven bouts that are all really solid, yeah. and the, the, the tacos and the beer are really cheap, and, <laughs> and it, was, it was just a fun place to hang out. Almost at that, in that special era, everybody that was like right there made it. Even the guy from the tacos, I told you the story there, uh, the first people that went there and sold tacos, mm -hmm. uh, they turned out to own the Taurinos. And then uh, I guess there were two brothers. They got into a fight now. One of them, they, they broke apart. And now they own Quintaco. So Taurino and Quintaco. Oh, no way. That's why, you know, the, the tacos taste the same as the salsas. Yes. You know, they're practically the same. Oh, wow. Yeah, but they started there. Because I remember my dad used to love the tacos right there from the Jaco Plaza. And when they moved out, my dad kept in touch with them. And it turns out that they, they put a little truck on the corner of Hoover and um, 11th Street. Oh, no way. And that became later on uh, Taurino. Oh, and they God. bought the whole corner. Yeah, so, and oh, then, wow. and I guess, I don't know if it's, I can't even say a brother or, or relative, I don't know, but they they got into a fight, and um, and uh, he went this way, and he put the uh, King Tacos uh, restaurant uh, franchise. Oh, sure, because I, I was wow. a skinny little fuck. I was 110 pounds, but I ate those tacos. Oh, like, man, oh, they were so good. good. <laughs> they were so good. And you know what? I, and we got to remember that a lot of great wrestlers came uh, came out of uh, Plaza. You know, we got uh, Los Migras. We have Jali Los Jaliscos. Super Astro. I saw him winning as a rookie. The Chivos. Yes. Uh, and we had a lot of uh, uh, big names back then. You know, we had Chivo Garcia. Mm -hmm. when, you know, he wrestled uh, against Cory Guerrero, Santo, Cavernario Galindo. They have a big yeah. history. Yeah. I, I looked up his name in um, uh, newspaper archives. I mm -hmm. could find uh, matches of his in Texas and Arizona. Yes. He, yes. he was a dream. from Juarez. Yes. From Juanitos, and uh, yeah, they have a big history. Uh, uh, Frank Tejeda, we were just talking oh, about Yeah, we were talking Frank about Tejeda, him. Yes. I saw Frank Tejeda at my very first Hadco Plaza show, and I remember seeing him saying, Well, he looks a little old and out of shape, yeah. and he got in there, and he yeah. was a badass. Yeah. He, he was a good He was one of those solid, solid wrestlers, effective wrestlers. And, and that's, you know, me becoming a wrestler. That's the image I wanted to uh, follow, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the effective, the, 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 the solid wrestler. At the same time, I wanted to uh, uh, be different. I didn't want to be the typical cliche wrestler where mm -hmm. the heel's the heel and it's always going to be the heel. And then the, the baby face is always going to be the Marty where he dies and, you know, and he makes a big comeback. I didn't want to do that. I, I just wanted to say, you know, I, I used to think, well, what about if, if I could do all these moves that the technicals could do and, you know, and just go at it and, you know, let's see who does it better. Yeah. And, it, yeah, it, it, yeah, I had some problems, you know. A lot of people didn't accept it at, at first, but, you know, it was my style. Yeah. It, it was a style, I, I don't know, I, I, I want to say that, that a lot of the wrestlers nowadays kind of follow through. Kind of almost, almost like it's a uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A formula? Yeah, a style that I that my style that that I started doing here. I, I you know a lot of guys you know try to do it. You know, right, right. Like you know, I see when when for for example for me, uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, Ray Mysterio Senior because he imposes style of wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, and you know he was a wrestler that was so uh, always really nice dressed. He always had the nice hairdos, and everybody tried to mimic that. You know, yeah. they all had the same kind of hairstyle, the same wrestling. I I liked it at first, but you know when you see it in every and everybody try to <laughs> imitate it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It kind of kills it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like, it's almost like, are you quintuplets or something? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a whole family with But you know, I've, what I've always said, there's only one Rey Mysterio, mm -hmm. and you know, he proved, he proved to be, you know, to uh, become better with age, you know? Yes. I remember watching him uh, against uh, Kiss, uh, and Super Astro and all these guys and that were epic matches against La Familia against Nietzsche against all these guys you know guys that he brought up that he groomed mm -hmm. 
And, uh, you know, at one point he, 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 he uh, wrestled against them, he tacked with them, and he made, and he made the familia, you know, when I, well, now you hear the familia, you think Damien, Nicho, really, mm -hmm. when I hear the familia, I, first, first guy I think of is Rey Mysterio, Damien, and Nicho. Well, I remember because I when I when I saw a lot of those uh, Tijuana based guys in the late eighties. Oh, in Halloween time. That's <laughs> I had to say, I was waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you mean Dean, Dean Malenko? <laughs> I remember when he wore the mask? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, but uh, but I remember late eighties when when I was seeing all the Tijuana guys and seeing what great workers. I remember people wow. telling me that's yeah. all Rey Mysterio's work. Yes. Yes. Hey, I know one of the reasons I wanted to bring up Mondo Lopez uh, is I remember when I first. Knew you uh, when you. In fact, I remember it was the night you wrestled Cara Marcada Santa oh Ana. God, oh my God! It was a headache. <laughs> I love. I love. I love oh bringing that match up with you. I remember when you when you were younger. Every time I'd say, "Remember that match?" You'd smile and go, "Oh, what a disaster!" <laughs> but I remember we were talking and you were um, talking about training with Mondo Lopez and saying how. He was a very strict, tough teacher, but he, oh, yeah. he uh, you said, you learn a lot from him. What was special about his teaching style? You know, he, he was just, he was one of those uh, teachers that would scream, mm -hmm. uh, curse, uh -huh. uh, but when you did something, he would really embrace it, you know? Uh, uh, I, I, at first, I didn't train with him, but he gave me the best advice that I followed through throughout my career and, and it, it brought me places. And I remember I was I was about maybe 16 or 17 at the time. And probably young, I can't, I can't remember. But anyways, um, I remember uh, walking into the gym, he would get there early, he would go in the weight room and he would be lifting weights. And I remember um, uh, Pedro Serrano came mm -hmm. in the building you know who Pedro Serrano is? Muralla del Ring. Oh yes, mm. Muralla yes. del Ring. He came in and he, he was you know, with his, he came in with his girlfriend and and I remember he said, "Hey, Yoyito, come here. Why don't you go on the top and do a moonsault?" I said, "Yeah, sure." I would go in there, jump over the top, do a head spring, run to the corner, do a backflip, and you know, and then I remember he came, and then Mando would stick his head out and you know, still lifting weights and looking at me. And he walked out. Hey, it's a tall over your he, he will walk out. I can't remember who else came in. And he goes, hey, can you do a backflip? I'm sure. I walked to the middle of the rope. I did the backflip. And, you know, and then he go, all right. You know, he would go out. And I would stay in there and, you know, practice on my head sprints and stuff like that. So, anyways, I went. I came out. And, uh, and, and, I, and I seen him that he was watching me. He goes, venga, mijo, venga, mi hijito. And I, I walk in the way, he's still lifting weights there, doing the curls and stuff. And he goes, uh, are you trying to impress somebody? I go, no, no, I'm not trying to impress anyone. He goes, who do you want to, eh, con quien quieres quedar bien? Yeah, I go, with nobody. He goes, so why are you hurting your knees? You know, every time you do these, it's a toll on your knees. You know, there's going to come a day where you're going to have to throw everything you have. Mm -hmm. And right now it's not the right time. Right now you're training. The day you have that, that opportunity, you, you do everything that you know. Now that's when you got to do it. We and need Mondo Lopez Mondo now Lopez. to give a lot of wrestlers that advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And it just stuck in my head. It just stuck of course, Superboy ignored him. <laughs> no, no, and really, um, I, I, I remember going to arenas where there was only not a lot of people, but I would hear, oh, you know, so and so is here, uh, this promoter or this person, or you know, and I would, you know, I would go out and do my thing, and they were so impressed, and you know, they would call me, and and I started moving, moving, I started doing. Uh, shows with, 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 with the American people and stuff like that, you know, with American promotions and uh, moving around a little bit more than the rest of the guys because, um, you know, I would give my, my 110% every time. I didn't care if there was any people or more people, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I did it because I loved it and I, and, I, and I could do it well.
And you were one of the guys, because there were a lot of guys who were just brilliant uh, local boys who were brilliant at Lucha Libre style, but you were one of those, you could transition to American style, Lucha style, whatever. Did that just come naturally to you? No, or? thanks to you, Kurt. Oh. What? Yes. <laughs> no, really. Because I had one style of wrestling, and that's mm-hmm. a style that I was taught through Gil, my dad, my brothers. Mm-hmm. And you introduced me to a lot of Japan uh, Japan tapes. Mm-hmm. And I started watching them, and they just opened a whole new world of wrestling. And I started, believe it or not, I started watching WWE. And it was a totally different uh, a style. And I remember talking about it. And Gil would get pissed. He goes, ah, you know, fucking Americans, they, they wrestle on their left side. No, fuck that. We're on the right side. <laughs> 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 and so you got to learn the, on the right. So I would always practice on my left, you know, mm. three-quarter rolls, uh, rolls, and all that stuff. I always with my, with my left, with my left, with my left. And it just came second nature, you know. And I would work right or left. And that's one of the things that I started teaching here. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my first students, I would yeah, I go, dude, you got to learn on your left. you got to learn on your left. You're going to be wrestling with a lot of Americans. And the day they, gonna, the, the day they tell you to do an arm drag, you're going to fall on your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. A lot of, a lot of guys, wow. when it came to an arm drag, they would land on their head. Because yes. they couldn't take the bump. And, um, and, it was, and, and, and to me, it was really easy. It was really easy, and like I, like I said, I started watching the Japanese style. Japanese style wrestling is also on the left. So, like I said, it, it came second nature to me, and and I would learn really easy, you know. And and I was always open. I was always looking. I was always um, how can I say this? I would go to the to shows just to watch how other guys would work. And, you know, sooner or later, you were wrestling these guys, and you knew what to expect, you know, uh, you know, as far as working-wise and, and how experienced this person was. Yeah, that made it a lot easier. You would scout there, the people. There was a guy, I don't remember his name, he wrestled as craze, Rob Courtney, and uh, he gave you a great compliment because he says, oh, wow. he says, I'd wrestle somebody like Mechanico, and it's just like, it's... Our styles class so much we couldn't do anything with each other. But you wrestle Superboy, and it didn't matter what your style was. You could have a great match with him. He yeah. made it easy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and it, and it, believe me, it's not it's not it's not that hard. And I and I've always, I've always said it. You know, the people used to tell me, "Oh, well, you going to Japan? How do you understand the language, or or how do you understand how to wrestle?" I go, oh, "You know what? Wrestling is universal." It's the universal language, just like math, you know. And, and if you know your stuff, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a problem. The only thing that changes is uh, working more on your left side and on your right. Yes, just like an American style, like, and and you know. And if you know how to work on your left, you shouldn't have any problems. Yeah, because I remember when you know, because as you know, I started working American style when when. Uh, I started learning lucha style. I loved it, but man, it felt like I was trying to write left-handed. Exactly. You know, it was like such, you know, do especially doing headlocks from the right and everything. That was so foreign to me, but mm-hmm. I dug it. I yeah, mean, I dug yeah. It. And you, you know, you hit it right on the nail. It's like writing with your left hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, at first, it was a little bit, you know, awkward to say the least. You know, because you're not used to uh, falling that certain way. Rolling that turn the way you're so used to it, and uh, you get you know after a while you just get used to it. You get, it comes second nature. It comes second nature. In fact, talking about falling on uh, your head, like <laughs> arm drags and that kind of thing, somewhere we could probably find this video. Uh-huh. There's proof, and I bet you your brothers Gustavo and Manuel do not remember this. Uh-huh. Very first time I met them was when we did the shoot for that music video for Kansas. Okay. Uh, that was wrestling based and they did a scene where uh, I was in the middle uh, and uh, uh, the, you know, Principe and Capitan were on either side of me and we were charging this other wrestler and we do like a three quarter roll uh-huh. I was taught American style oh. So they do their roll on the right. I do mine on the left, and one of your brothers went 
right in my head. Uh, and if you find that video, you actually, it's just a two, two seconds. You see me go, oh, oh. Oh, wow. And then I remember if, <laughs> Budokan, God rest his soul, uh, whenever that would get brought up in front of somebody who they were kayfabing. Oh, okay. Kurt, remember when they landed on your head? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> How long were you in the hospital? <laughs> I don't know. How many stitches did you need? <laughs> I don't remember, Buddha. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you God, be... God bless him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it's funny because I remember back in, back in uh, 78, 78, when they were doing shows in uh, San Pedro. Yes. Um, and, they, and I remember that's where I first seen... Buddha Khan and uh, Pistol Pete, and then they were wrestled. From, they were wrestled there in uh, Strand Arena. I yeah, remember. yeah, they wrestled. Uh, it was like an old theater. Yeah, Gory Guerrero would be selling tickets. Yes, I remember. Yes, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was only like eight or nine at the time, mm-hmm. and I, I could remember like it was yesterday. Uh, I remember my dad wrestled uh, uh, Buddha Khan and Pistol Pete, and he tagged up with. Uh, Coloso, Gran Coloso. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I remember this big American guy. He looked like, he, he actually was a bodybuilder. And he would always feud with, with uh, Buddha Khan. Mm-hmm. And always just arm wrestle. Uh, they were doing some arm wrestling contests or something. That was, that was cool. That was, was a, Hogan, you know that, right? No. <laughs> it was it Hogan. Was Hulk Hogan. No. <laughs> the guy looked more like the Iron Cheek. <laughs> yeah. But he was a big dude, real muscular. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Good old days. And again, we're talking, this is 1978. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm talking about uh, um, shows being run by Jorge Guerrero at, at this place. Uh, where you know Falcon de Oro, mm-hmm. Platanito would ref, and you know all all the, all the guys were there. You Back know? when Platanito had that pompadour oh, hair. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. And, uh, in fact, I don't. You know, Gory Guerrero must have had something to do with the Strand Theater itself because I'll never forget being there one day. This was 1981, mm-hmm. and I see him there, and he'd always wear he'd be dressed nicely. He'd always wear a suit, and. Uh, I see these uh, punk rockers, like back in the days when punk was a shocking looking thing. Yes. And they're sitting there just talking with Gory Guerrero about renting out the building. And I think, this is the most odd thing, this old gentleman, <laughs> Gory Guerrero, talking, talking business with these us badass looking kids. <laughs> yeah. Here's another name from the past that I remember, and somebody actually got to work with, Sal Quintero. Oh yeah, Sal Quintero. Uh, Sal Quintero. A Infernal? You should wrestle as Infernal? I didn't realize that was him. I think, I, yeah, I think... Because <laughs> no, I remember when I saw him at Hadco, he was as uh, so, Salkin, and then he became King Cora later. King Cora. Oh, and I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not 100% sure, but I think he used to wrestle as Infernal. Ah. Back, back in Hadco Plaza. Because there were two Infernales. Oh, One okay. And, and I think, I'm not 100% sure. Salkin tell you, yeah. He was the first wrestler who ever put me over clean. <laughs> really? Yeah. Remember that match when he, uh, you, you put it up on YouTube recently, I, where he's like called Torbellino or something? Yeah. Oh, that's him? I didn't know I was going to wrestle him that day. Okay. I just got in the ring, and there I look, and I see him with a mask on, and I'm going, oh my god, that's Sal. And, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the first time anybody ever put me over clean. What was his name? Torbellino. 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 He just used it that one night. Okay, okay. Every other week he was King Cora. King Cora. Yeah, it's funny because all these guys came out of the woodwork mm-hmm. right after uh, uh, the 90s or early 90s because mm-hmm. they've been retired for so mm-hmm. long, they, ever since Haco Blas in 84. Mm-hmm. And they just started coming out. I remember one of them was Terremoto Quintero. Mm-hmm. Terremoto Quintero. Oh, yes. he, he wrestled in the early 90s. Actually, he tagged up in one occasion. I think it was Indu, Indu, uh, Telemoto Quintero and myself versus um, Piloto, Piloto Nuclear. Mm-hmm. I think Alcon Blanco and Capitan Oro. Yes. And wow, we did such a riot that day. We were fighting on the floor. Oh, it was, it was terrible. 
was a good, it, it was a good match. It was a good match. We had lots of fun. You know, just watching these tapes, man. You know, we used to go for 45 minutes. Yes. Mm-hmm. 45 minutes. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of condition. And, and, and it was it was just awesome. And two out of three falls. And, you know, I guess that's when it meant something. That's why uh, I was in Mexican wrestling. They always had only five matches. Because they would go long, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but back in Haco Plaza, they, w- they wouldn't go that long because, like I, like you know, like you said before, they were so disciplined. You know, we had a a, a time. Ke- we actually had a timekeeper. Mm-hmm. You know, we had a timekeeper that would actually keep time, and you know, uh, the, the the ref was always you know checking with the timekeeper, and you know he would indicate you know five minutes, two minutes, one minute, you know, so he would he would know. You know, uh, when it was time to, you know, uh, if it went too long, they would actually just stop the match. Which is so, what they should do today. They're exactly. So, so many guys don't stick to their times and they just let them I, go. I can't, you know, um, I went to, uh, this past Saturday, I went to a AWS show. Mm-hmm. Great show, by the way. It was, it was awesome. Um, and normally, they start at 8 and they <laughs> wind up finishing about midnight. Yeah. 11.45, midnight, and um, uh, I got there like around 8.45, close to 9 o'clock, and to my surprise, it was the fourth match. Wow. Mm. It was the fourth match, and then uh, I saw Ray Rosas. Uh, I saw Ray Rosas, I went to, you know, he can say hi and stuff, and, and, I, and he was just telling me he was a new uh, coordinator, uh, mm. and, and, and uh, just handling the back and stuff and he goes you know what I'm gonna make a change uh, I'm um, you know start making the matches shorter you know mm-hmm. that way we have more time for bar and more time to mingle and yeah. I go which is a great concept that you know what it's better to have a nice 10 minute match where you know it's more exciting you know you still have that energy to people want more exactly yeah. what did WCW do all the time you know, they would cut it, boom, oh, man, it, it just want to make you see more, you know? Because there's so many uh, shows we've been to in, in the last 10 years where the wrestling itself is great, but the matches go so long, exactly. that by the time you get to the main event, the audience is yeah, exhausted. Exactly. They, they leave. They don't yeah, watch. Yeah. You know? And, you know, he brought this, and, and then he goes, I'm planning to finish mm, 10.30, 10.45 the latest. And he did, you know, he, he, wow. he uh, was a little awesome. bit over 1045, but, you know, he, he met his goal and uh, the matches were great. And I go, so the only thing I'm worried is that the LA fuckers are next. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a sip of his beer. I go, man, you got a little bit of uh, something stronger than that. Yes, I got to go talk to these guys. <laughs> but, uh, he, uh, you know, I just want to congratulate him and he did an awesome job. Oh, that's and I great. think if he keeps on doing that and he's heading in that direction, I think AWS is going to be a, a, a better place, you know. Uh, to go and see the matches where you're not going to be out there for that late, you know. Unless nice. you want to nice. stay and yeah. you know mingle and and to have a few beers, but uh, I salute him because more people need to get that art down. Most that's, definitely, you know. You... And, and I'll be honest, you know, in my shows, that's what mm-hmm. really uh, uh, made it exciting and made made people want to come back because I would I would finish early. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, I would start early and finish early, and uh, you know, make your matches short. The only match that would really go long would be the main event, you know. But either than that, all the matches would be, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes. The yeah, keep longest. them hungry. Keep yes, them hungry. Definitely. And I think, uh, and, you know, we go back to the discipline of Hako Plaza. And I think we should, you know, it's something that I maybe we shouldn't be talking about because it has to be uh, uh, integrated in all, all these matches. Uh, I was I was going over my 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 phone a while ago, and I saw this character, this promoter. I'm I'm not even gonna mention his name. Why not? Uh, <laughs> because I would like to have him here in front of me, so he could you know tell me otherwise. Well, you can yeah. tell us a little bit about it, and I'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you I'll who it is. It. But anyways, this guy ha- has done a, a, a lot of shows. His his matches go for so long. First of all, he claims to be a wrestler where he's not. He claims to be a trainer where he he doesn't know what to do himself. Uh, promoter, 
you know, he doesn't pay the guys, and, uh, mm. you know, he's promoting, he's doing all this. He's in front of a mic, and he talks BS about everybody. And, uh, uh, dude, you know, and he, and, he, and he talks, yeah. Okay. And he talks about how you got to go and train, how you got to be a better wrestler, how, you know, I go, oh, my God. You know, all these things that he's saying, those are the number one rules he's breaking, you know. <laughs> yes. You know, he doesn't know left to right. It's just lucky people. Mm-hmm. They get good sponsors. They have a, a good break. But, yeah, at the end of the day, he don't pay anybody. I already guessed and, it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just talking so much. I don't want to even mention his name. I don't, yeah, I don't want to even bring him up. But, yeah, I have to bring him up because, you know, these guys talk so much and they should be implementing all of this in their promotions. Otherwise, how they how do they even dare call themselves promoters or wrestlers? You know, Absolutely. I think I think we're going to his show coming up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this gonna, is gonna, Fredo, like, Fredo, our resident troublemaker. I don't know if it's a good show, but it has good names. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. It has yes. good names yeah. on the card. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's got names, but it's not a particular interesting show. Yeah. We'll, be, we'll be interviewing people probably and not watching the other cool. guys at all. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's, that's what it's all about, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. It, it is what it is, and it is. And you know, sometimes I must say I don't feel blue about it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Or something smells fishy, but <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and you know, these are the number one guys that need to implement a little bit of that. Talk less and do more action, you know. And I bet you if they do that, I don't know, maybe they'll be good promoters. Yeah, because I, I never really considered promoting, but if I was, I was going to, the first thing I'd want to do is find the people who know how to do what I don't know how to do. Exactly. Like, I kind of think that if you're, you've are been a wrestling fan or you've been around the business enough, you should have a pretty good idea about what, how to do it. Mm-hmm. But some people are just really done with that. No, they, they don't. They don't know. And they don't, they don't really know, know it. it. They, they don't really know it. They really yeah. don't know what they're doing. They and, don't study it either. Like, they don't even... But you know, you, know the, the, you, know, you know what keeps these guys going? That there's always people that are willing to do this and willing to do that. So, by the, by the time, by the, the way you see it, by the time they get there, everything's being done for them, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I seen, I seen other promoters that, man, you get to the arena and they're barely putting up the ring. The chairs are not there. And, you know, it's, it's the show starts at 6 they're there at six thirty, and, and they're <laughs> yes. charging the people that are already sitting down. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you know, I go, oh my god, and they don't even have uh, an announcer. They don't have a referee. Mm-hmm. Sounds familiar? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you ref? <laughs> Man, that day, oh, it was like I one of my first that. shows. One of the people on this podcast. <laughs> I, I was I was the referee with, read with the keep on truck and t-shirt on. And oh my god, that was one of my first uh, that one was of my first though. shows. And I'm all excited, you know, and we're ready to go. And and then and you know, I, I go backstage and okay, you guys ready? Hey, where's the ref? Oh my, <laughs> there's no ref. <laughs> Come here. I remember sitting in the front row and you're yelling, we need a referee. And I'm like, I'm a shitty referee. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was fun. I, 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 I got to say, I know that was an arena that was kind of out of the way and hard to find, but I like that little place. I that loved nice it. I loved it. I loved it. You know, it's a shame that it didn't have no parking, mm-hmm. you know, and people were complaining because they had a park, you know, on the other block. Yes. <laughs> or, or stuff like that, you know, but... Uh, I love the place. I love the place. And, you know, now thinking back at it, you know, I could have rented out the place maybe for, for a gym, you know. Mm-hmm. And, 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 um, and, because to me, right, I was renting it, but I heard just bad things about it. Anyways, but, uh, I love the place and, you know, it, 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 it it packed up the people and people were still going even though there was no parking. I remember yeah. that. And it was so fun, yeah. There's a very loyal crowd there. You know, one of the reasons why, uh, I started promoting is to give back a little bit to those mm-hmm. veterans, to all these people that paid the way. You know, uh, I did a tribute to uh, was it the uh, Titon? 
Yes. Piloto nuclear. I think Gori Chavez. Yes. Oh, yeah. So in all the old timers were going. Uh, Kurt Brown. Uh, Kurt Brown was there. <laughs> uh, Enrique Medina. I think you did do it. You gave him an award, didn't you? I, I think, think he so. was like think so. you guys brought him up or something. I I, I think he gave me an award for like the you, cleaning the arena. I don't or think something. he gave you an award, but he called you up to do something. Like you were like one of the people who was like, I don't know if it was a Superboy show, but somebody did that for you. Oh, that might have been MPW then. Oh, that's MPW. Yeah, that's, yeah, right. Yeah. that's right. That's right. I like forgot like about that. Then we got to do something for Kurt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, thank <laughs> you. Almost <laughs> definitely. You know, I I've always said it so many times. You know, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Always being there. You know, um, uh, really, you know, you got me the best gigs, uh, the biggest companies, and, and man, oh, wow. We are back, and now we are going to talk about tri pre Preview, Triple A's Ray de Reyes, which should be airing live on Twitch. Um, if you're, you could watch it live. If you can't watch it live on Twitch, you could subscribe. I think it costs like five ninety nine to subscribe a month. But um, if you have an Amazon Prime account... You could actually you could actually pick this as your uh, your uh, free um, subscription for a month. I do I do it every month for uh, AAA when I remember. <laughs> um, although now lately I, I have been remembering. Um, I do try to watch as much as I can from AAA. I think there was a year period where I was just skipping AAA just because there was nothing I was really into. Uh, as soon as like all the guys left, but everybody's coming back. I mean, the gang's coming back. Panta's back. Phoenix is back. Daga even came back. So Ty is back. I mean, everybody's back. So the shows are a little more exciting. Plus, they've actually added a lot, of, a lot more talent. Um, their undercard has gotten better. Their I think the only thing is they still have like they're still holding on to Doctor Wagner Jr. and Blue Demon Jr. and you know, certain guys that I'm not really a big fan of. Um, some of the guys have actually improved. Like um, Murder, Murder Clown, and Monster Clown aren't as horrible as they used to be. So so they're at least watchable. But they still have Jeff Jarrett and guys like that. So. You still get a couple of matches where you could actually skip. The Exoticos matches have been very bad. So there's some matches you could skip. But for the most part, I mean, you're basically getting at least three to four good matches on every single one of their shows, as opposed to what we're getting with CMLL, where CMLL actually streams three live shows. And maybe we're getting one good match out of those three shows, which is really sad. Uh, a sad state of Lucha Libre right now, where that's, that's, that's what's going on right now. Uh, but... Ray de Reyes, uh, it, this one also looks like a good show. Um, I think they probably could have done a little more with it, but you know, they're they, it's still a pretty solid card. Um, the opening match is Nino Hamburguesa and Big Mommy de defending the AAA mixed tag team titles against Viano 3 Jr. and Lady Maravilla. That should be good. They've been building a storyline on Lady Maravilla and Nino Hamburguesa. I'm guessing that if there is a title change, that might be the reason. That might be the reason, just because they're continuing that storyline where she, um, he's kind of, she's very flirtatious with him, and he's falling for it. So um, it's kind of disappointing, just because uh, the only thing I'm kind of disappointed is that Lady Maravilla probably would have been better in the in the, the match, the women's match, and La Yedra and Viano, Viano Three Junior were like a really fun tag team. So they probably should have done continue with that, but maybe they, you know, I understand they wanted to change, mix it up a bit, and they have that storyline. That should be a good opening match. Um, Nino and Burgess and Big Mommy are very popular with the fans and you know what they lack in um, in quality as far as uh, what they do in the ring they make up for it with the, the you know the fans getting very much involved cheering them on and uh, the Rudos Viano 3 Jr. is very good and Lady Maravilla is good as well so this sh and you know Nino and Burguesa and Big Mommy are, are, are they're not like horrible they're actually good I mean they're not I mean especially um, Burguesa he's 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 a, he's he's a little bit better than than he gets credit for. Um, he's just very he's just got charisma. He, he, sometimes you just go with charisma, but they do their spots, which works well for them. The second match is Lady Shani defending the AAA Reina de Reina's title in a four way match. She'll be defending against La Yedra, Kira, and Chica Tormenta. I wouldn't be shocked if um, Fabi gets involved in this, uh, especially since she started feuding with Kira. Uh, maybe she gets added in, or maybe not. Uh, but this should be good. I mean, Shani. It's funny because of all the four women, the one that's been the most impressive has been Chica Tormenta, and she's not used as frequently in AAA. But um, Starfire is also not in this match, which she's also somebody that's she might be the best one in in AAA, the best female in Mexico right now. I think, other than Fabi Apache, and Fabi Apache and Starfire are probably the two best female 
females that AAA has, and they're not in this. So I wouldn't be shocked if there's like something involving where they get involved or something. Um, this could be good. I would expect it to be good just because if it doesn't have Hijo Tirantes shenanigans, I, I wouldn't be shocked if it's it's good or, you know, any like over the top interference. But if there's any of that stuff, it's been underwhelming, especially with it'll be underwhelming just because Lady Shawnee's had some, she's been booked in matches where she's kind of like supposed to look good, but it ends up like just falling apart because there's so much crap that happens in the matches. And, you know, that's the only problem I have with AAA is that they sometimes overbook a lot of stuff, especially on the undercard when they don't really have to do that. Um, the third match is the Perils and Mal reunion of Taya, Daga, and Joe Leader. They take on Poder del Norte. I think this is actually going to be a good match. Uh, Poder del Norte is probably the most underrated Rudo trio in Mexico, and they're really good. Um, really good bases. Um, they do a lot of good stuff, and I think they'll be fun against th these guys. It'll be interesting if it'll be a clean match just because, um, you know, there's some of these guys involved. There's always, you know, it's AAA also, so you never know. The, you're always worried about some of the, so what could go wrong with some of the matches. But um, I think this will be a good, especially just because you have Poder del Norte. And Yundaga's good. Taya, Taya works well with um, guys, and these guys will bump for her. So I think that'll work with, that'll work well. Uh, and Joe Leader's going to probably do something crazy in the match. Um, to get him to 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 leave on a stretcher, um, the fourth match is the random trio of Pagano, Drago, and Puma King going up against the OGTs. I think this will be a good match, also, pretty much like the previous match. I think it'll be. You could pretty much do say the same thing about this one. Um, you know, Pagano will do something crazy to you know go get stretchered out. So, I think we're basically at this point we're probably getting two stretchers, maybe three. Um, so, you know, by, by the time we get to the main event, they'll see AAA will be out of stretchers. Um, I think they did a show with it where that happened. Um, a couple of shows where that happened, so don't be shocked if it happens again. Um, but it should be good. Um, all those guys have been fun. Averno is always like one of my favorites still. Um, the fifth match is the Torneo Rey de Reyes. I think that's the one downfall that this year they did with Rey de Reyes. Um, they didn't really build it up to like where they had the, the first you know, the qualifying matches. I think they need to just do, do that. I think you need to stick to that. Four quali qual qualifying matches, and then you have the the final. I think they should have done that again. Um, it's. I think it was a mistake. On, on I mean, this will probably be a good match, though, but I think it was a mistake just because you were you were building up the interest in Rey de Reyes, and that's the way you build it up with the, the qualifying matches. And in fact, if you did it, you could have had like a good combination, of like say Loretto Kid, Ijo Vikingo, maybe um, Sammy Guevara and Taurus or something like that, and I think that would have been fine. Uh, but you know, this is all. This is was more their way of getting everybody to a, a, a deeper group of guys on the show. Um, so the Torneo Rey de Reyes, the, the the guys involved will be Loretto Kid, Ijo Vikingo, Jack Evans, Sammy Guevara, Australian Suicide, Taurus, Golden Magic, Aerostar, and Mysticis Junior. Um, you basically have two trios that are kind of, um, you have two trios in this, and then you have a bunch of guys mixed in there. Um, I think three three guys mixed in that aren't in the trios. Because um, you have the Loretto Kid, Ijo Vikingo, Mysticis Jr. trio, and then you have the new newly formed trio of Jack Evans, Sammy Guevara, and Australian Suicide. Uh, I think it'd be kind of cool. Like, I, While the winner of this is supposed to get a shot at the title, uh, so I it could be anyone. I could see it being Loretto Kid. It could be Ijo Vikingo. I think Ijo Vikingo would be fun. Like him against Phoenix would be an excellent match. It could be Taurus. It could be, um, it could be you know, Jack Evans or Sammy Guevara or Suicide. Um, it could be anyone. Uh, I think the only the only one the only one I don't see really doing getting it is probably Mysticis Jr. Just because he's really new as far as that character. And, you know, I don't think they could get... I don't think he's ready for a match of that level. But, you know, then again, like I said, if it's just them winning Ray the Rays and they're not being anything to follow it up, then, you know, there's no real big deal to it. Um, the sixth match is the is a wacky trio match where they have Psycho Clown teaming up with Maximo Mamba and Mamba versus Jeff Jarrett, Killer Cross, and La Mascara. Um, this is probably going to be the one match I will skip off the show, just honestly. I don't think I care about this match. Psycho Clown should be good in this, but it, this has, you know, this has kind of like the 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 my my no list of people that I want to watch. 
like La Mosca and Jeff Jarrett are in this, so automatically I'm not that interested in this. Um, I would expect some interference in this, just because it it's kind of just a weird card, honestly, with this match in there. Um, that's kind of like the one match. I would think there's going to be some change in the mat that match. Um, the seventh match is the main event: uh, Pentagon Junior and Ray Phoenix, or Pentagon Junior and Phoenix challenging for the AAA World Tag Team titles against Rey Scorpion and Tejano Jr. Um, that should be an excellent match, but I also expect a lot of interference. Uh, we have Cody Rhodes uh, announced as appearing on the show. He's not wrestling since he's he's still recovering from an injury. I would expect him to set something up. I, I would assume they're going to make some of official announcement. Maybe they'll announce like who's going to be, what AAA, who, what AAA time will be on uh, on the AEW show coming up in May or you know maybe they'll set up something like he's going to feud with somebody in AAA uh, some match we don't have Hijo Fantasma on this card so maybe it's it'll involve him or somebody else um, that's not involved in the card La Parca you know you never know um, but you know that 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 should be that should be him kind of setting something up I don't think he's just going to be there as a as a as he's not just going to be there to sit down and watch the show um also, I wouldn't be shocked that the Young Bucks showed up, and because there's always been talk, you know, there's they're constantly showing up to confront Pentagon Junior and Phoenix, the Lucha Brothers. So I wouldn't be shocked if they show up on this show. This would be a pretty big show for them to show up on. Um, so that wouldn't be sh that wouldn't be a big surprise. Um, it would be a big surprise, but um, it's probably just gonna co it'd be a good way for them to continue their. Um, their their current rivalry that they're doing that they're trying to bring to AEW and other places so that should be something worth checking out um, like I said the AEW AAA partnership was announced I think it was around I think it was also during the, the press conference that they held with um they they no they actually did the they did several press conferences and they announced this at some point the both promotions did press conferences uh, but they have a partnership and like I said. Uh, the AEW upcoming show, they did announce that they were going to have a triple A, um, some triple A talent involved on one of their shows, on that show. So I would expect that announcement. Maybe they, they like I said, maybe they announced that Ray De Ray is, or maybe they announced they, they, it's, they're just there to like do some, set something up for um, Cody and someone from triple A for an upcoming show. Because if this is going to be a partnership, I would assume maybe they're going to work something out where Cody ends up working um, a triple A show. And, you know, maybe triple mania. Um, who knows? Uh, but they did announce the Triple Mania main event at a press conference recently. The Triple Mania main event will be Blue Demon Jr. versus Dr. Wagner Jr. in a mask versus hair match. Uh, this will be the headline match for a show that they announced would have six excellent main event matches. Uh, but they also mentioned Copa Triple Mania would be on the show. So, so maybe that's the seventh. <laughs> that doesn't count as one of the excellent matches or main event matches. But uh, they... That's that's part of the plan. Uh, I'm not as excited about this match. I think I I wasn't even excited about when they first announced the the. If you recall, Triple Mania last year's Triple Mania ended with Dr. Wagner Jr. challenging Ali Park to a mask versus hair match at the following Triple Mania, and Ali Park pretty much buried Dr. Wagner Jr. at that point, and Triple A as well. But um, it was a month later when Ali Park decided had another disagreement with. AAA and he's been gone, but there's already been rumors that maybe um, AAA will reach out and talk to um, try to get Ali Park back on uh, back on in good back on good terms with them, and maybe he could join in on this. Um, I don't know, but right now the way it stands, it's going to be those two guys going at it. Um, I'm not that excited about it. Everybody's already assuming Blue Demon. Everybody already just assumes Blue Demon Junior is going to win the match. First of all. If he wasn't going to lose it, you weren't going to have Dr. Wagner Jr. win Blue Demon Jr.'s mask. So that right there already tells you that that's not going to happen. Because if you were going to have Blue Demon Jr. lose his mask, you would probably want him to lose it to somebody who's a lot bigger. You know, a lot uh, either a, a, a up-and-coming guy like Psycho Clown or, you know, or someone like Ali Park or, you know... And so it's not happening at all. I don't. I, the odds are pretty much, I would say, a hundred percent that it's not going to happen. That he's going to lose his mask. Um, there's still that point. I would say like ninety nine point nine 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 nine, and then you maybe have like a eight at the end point. You know, eight at the end. So it's like 
point zero 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 two, and maybe right there you might say like there's a shot that he might lose the mask, but he, I don't think he is. Um, I can't imagine him having more to offer after if he was to drop the mask. It's not like you know he could still keep going, but I mean people, I don't think there would be the the same interest in him. Um, so honestly, I don't see I don't really see how they're gonna get out of that. I think at this point, AAA really has. I think AAA kind of has to start improving their like main event group. Like they have main event guys, but they don't have like this. They don't have the. I think they they still have. They took so many years to like develop, like build them up. Other than Psycho Clown, that you know, it'd be kind of hard to just have like a a different main event for the fans. That you know, the fans will accept as a main event. Um, same thing is happening with CML. Actually, even worse with CML, just because. You know, they haven't really, they've been like, you know, like a guy like Sobrano Jr., remember, he was like pushed high and then like suddenly, you know, Diamantes was ahead of him. Nobody wants to see Diamantes versus like so-and-so in any of these singles matches. So, you know, I don't know. But that's that's AAA right now. Triple Mania main event, Blue Demon Jr. versus Dr. Wagner Jr., I'm not that excited about that. I, I'm sure they'll, I think they'll start announcing, I'm sure at Ray the, at Ray the Reyes, They'll announce something else for that show, and then we'll probably get like about two months of nothing like being mentioned. Um, then maybe they'll mention one other thing, and then they'll do like they'll announce the tire car like two three weeks prior to the show. So, you know, but it should be I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked because they have a they have a deeper roster of talent, and now this related partnership with um AEW, um, they have now a, a few more foreigner options as well like. With Cody, the Young Bucks, um, it's not as many people, but it's at least more to add to the mix of like you know Killer Cross and Impact guys like Johnny Mundo and um, the Lucha Underground guys that may or may not still be around. So it, there's a little bit more of a of a, a group of people. Uh, so you know that's about it for um, this week as far as what's been going on with Lucha. I think I think um, the next podcast will probably do a. A uh, recap of the Dos Leyendas and and Rey de Reyes show, so that'll be the next podcast. I might have guests for that show. Not not one hundred percent sure on that. Uh, we'll have part two after as well of the Superboy interview as well on that show. So that's about it for this this week. Um, again, check check out the website luchaworld.com for all the latest news. Um, I've mostly been doing a lot of recap. Uh, Recaps of interviews. I've been I've recapped Hijo de Fantasma and Terry Bliss interviews with Mas Lucha, which were really good. Uh, I think that's about that's pretty much Informa really didn't have a lot of information recently, so you know, that's about. I think that's about it. Um, check out that I like I said, um, the Patreon page. I will probably be doing a podcast. I might be doing two podcasts for that for that as well uh, coming up. Um, like I said, I think I do have to change the, the format for that just because I think it, I think it's, it's, it's not, um, it's, it's a lot of, it's more work and not, I don't know. I think more people are more into just the podcast aspect of it and not, not so much the other stuff. Um, that's about it for this week's show. So again, I want to thank everyone for listening and we will talk to you guys again real soon.